The following interview was conducted with Bo Williams and president, uh, current president of the Mortar Board for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Tuesday, March 22, 2011 in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Library. Bo, welcome. Good morning, and thank you very much. Good morning. Hey, it's an honor to be here. I'm thank happy you. to be a part of this. Thank you. Okay, start. let's start. Tell us where and when you were born and your si siblings and early sure. years. Sure, sure. Well, I was born in a, uh, I call it a small town, but uh, comparative to small towns in Indiana, it's not too small, but in California, uh, it's called Clovis, a town called Clovis. And if you've ever eaten a raisin before, uh, it's probably come from my home county, Fresno County, because we're right smack in the center of the state. and we produce, our county does, about 90 plus percent of the raisins consumed in America. So uh, that's our, our fun fact of uh, Clovis, California. I was born in, uh, in Fresno, though, on, uh, in 1986 okay. was when I was born in, in July. So um, lived a lot of life, uh, especially in, in Clovis, California. really enjoyed it there. Tell us about grade school and then talk about high school, too. Sure. I, uh, <clears throat> I went to Gettysburg elementary, uh, the fighting generals there, and uh, was really enjoyed it. I had a, an older sister going growing up, too. I still have her, obviously, uh, and she went to Gettysburg Elementary as well, and uh, we were really involved in sports and 4-H in grade school, and then uh, when it got into high school, still involved with sports. I played football a lot. Um, that was one of my heavy involvements. I was actually uh, on the I was starting right offensive tackle for the Clovis East Timberwolves. In our senior year, we won the Valley Championship as a third-year varsity program, and we were ranked third in the state, 23rd in the nation. We had an awesome year. It went 12-1, and one, and it was, it was a great memory. And then another big highlight of high school was uh, FFA, the Future Farmers of America, and it's formerly now known as the National FFA Organization. And I served as an officer in chapter regional section level, uh, and then also after high school I had an opportunity to serve as a state FFA officer for California, and uh, afterwards had the uh, blessing of, uh, of being able to serve as national FFA president in 2006-2007. So we represented um, half a million members nationwide, including Puerto Rico, Alaska, Hawaii, and all the states, and uh, we got to do some really cool stuff, traveled 100,000 miles went uh, to 40 of the 50 states, um, gave more than 100 different speeches and workshops, and met with various stakeholders from politicians, administrators, parents, students, um, and, uh, and sponsors. But the big focus of that year was really helping develop the future potential of, of uh, student leaders within FFA, the half a million members. And, and for those that, uh, that may not know what FFA is, it's a national youth leadership organization um, for a leadership organization for students interested in agriculture uh, and ag education based off of three pillars basically which is ag education which is in the classroom learning um, SAE which is supervised ag experience program it's like a project that they have so for me I I raised pigs and rabbits and worked in a meats lab and worked on a swine farm and did some other fun stuff and uh, and that's where you apply what you learn in the classroom and then also, the, the third leg of that is the FFA component, which is the leadership side, where it really helps you learn how to work effective on teams and be a good leader and uh, give presentations and be um, good at communicating with other people. So uh, FFA is an organization near and dear to my heart, uh, just like Purdue is near and dear to my heart as well. And uh, it's, uh, it's a big reason, actually, why I, I am here at Purdue. So. Did you, uh, uh, your travels during that time, did you come to Purdue at any time? I actually did, have, yeah. Oh, okay, because they have their national roundup that don't they here in the city? Yes, summer? they have their national FFA convention. 50,000 FFA members flood the streets of Indianapolis. It's awesome. Um, and that is in October, I believe okay. it is. So, But yeah, I, I, my family, my mom and dad are both Purdue graduates, actually. And um, my dad moved to, to California when he, he got his undergrad here at Purdue and then he did his master's PhD at University of Illinois, and uh, and my dad moved out to mom and dad moved out to Fresno, California, when he got the teaching job at Fresno State University out there, and uh, so we'd come back to Indiana all the time to visit family, usually twice a year, and uh, summer and winter vacation, and um, made some trips to Purdue for sure, and then during FFA, I actually had to, or actually had had the opportunity to uh, come up for a formal campus visit and. 
met with people like uh, Dr. Dale Whitaker and um, some other folks like Mark Russell and, and some students and just wanted to interact on a more personal level with what it was like to be a Boilermaker and, um, and what it meant to, to be a student at Purdue University and what to learn more about what the institution is about. Super. Sounds good. So then Purdue was your choice. Did you come for Boiler Gold Rush? I, you know, sadly I did not. It was I, going on a bit. I mean, they still had, well, it's changed a little bit over time. It, it was going on. I transferred here. Uh, so I, oh, I did my... Tell us about early sure. pre, pre-Purdue. <laughs> so growing up in, in, uh, in high school, elementary school, I knew I was going to Purdue. That was the place I wanted to go. It was my dream school, still is. And uh, I always thought I was going to Purdue. And then high school life kind of happened. It was just easier, it was more convenient. Uh, more financially feasible for my family for me to go to Fresno State, which is where my dad taught. Um, and then uh, so I applied there and, and got in and um, kind of put Purdue on the back burner. And then I uh, was elected national office and then got connected with people like Dale Whitaker and, um, and uh, found out that there still it could be a chance for me to attend Purdue. And um, I did a lot of praying about that, talking to mentors, uh, talking to friends, talking to family, trying to figure out, okay, I have this opportunity, I'm halfway done with college, I can go to Purdue, transfer there, uh, do I want to take this leap of faith and uh, would it be good? And after interacting with the students, interacting with the faculty and, and just seeing the opportunities at Purdue, uh, my answer was resoundingly yes, for sure. Um, because there's something about Purdue's campus, right? Um, I transferred in here as a junior um, and I transferred here because um, a lot of a lot of universities. I've interacted with quite a few yeah, through FFA of and, and, and all, all my travels. Yeah, sure. a lot of universities they preach students first, students first, students first. Well, Purdue University is one of the few places that really lives that out authentically. I feel um, they really focus on students and student development, and uh, I, I kind of call it for, um, Purdue University. They uh, there is no ceiling, meaning there is tons of room to grow. Uh, it's a Great wide open spaces. Yeah, and. There's no other institution, no other university that I've found that invests in their student leaders as much as Purdue does. They do a phenomenal job of doing that. That's nice to hear. It yeah. really is. Mm-hmm. Did, uh, what, now, when you uh, transferred here, did you, where were you living on campus? I actually was an RA, uh, resident assistant in Harrison Hall. Okay. Seventh floor, uh, the manly men up there. I had about 50-ish uh, freshmen, mostly freshman guys. And uh, it was a lot of fun being their resident assistant. I enjoyed that a lot, yeah. um, being able to interact mean. with them and, and, you know, help. It's their first year at Purdue, first year in college, being able to help them grow and develop. And now it's neat to see them as sophomores start to step into leadership roles, start to take advantage of the great opportunities that Purdue has to offer and, and really chart their course here at Purdue. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is your, ma- your major for the research? Tell us about that. My then- major, yes, my major is agriculture economics. I started in animal science. I was animal science, meat science emphasis, uh, and then I transferred into agriculture economics because I feel it just aligned more with my long-term goals. Right. Okay. Now let's talk about uh, the presidency of a mortar board, what the associate organizations and then challenges and programs. And sure. Go ahead. Mor- mortar board is a national senior honor society. And uh, Purdue has one of the best chapters in the nation. Uh, we were at the national conference this last year or this summer, and uh, everybody talked about, "Wow, that's what you guys do at Purdue. That's really impressive. How can we do that at our school?" And uh, the reason that's set up how it is here at Purdue is because we've had a uh, a great number of torch carriers uh, that have carried the torch well in previous years and really set us up for success, right. which we've tried to do this year for future years as well. So. What is Mortarboard? It is, uh, again, something that's based off of three pillars. And one is scholarship, another is leadership, and another is service. And so you get selected into Mortarboard um, by You're excelling nominated. in those three categories. It's by nomination. Yes. Uh, you, actually, you don't even apply. So a staff member or a fellow student or somebody actually nominates you without you knowing about it. And then us, we just had our selection, actually us as a mortar board class reviews all the nominations and then we select the people based on the nominations we received. Do you and do an interview with each of the nominees? We actually don't. They don't okay. know about it. Um, okay. So it's all 
it's is within the group and then on paper or what the denomination nominees. Yeah, okay. yep. and then once we select them, we start planning a tapping ceremony. And it's really fun. We go, we bust into their classes, getting permission, of course, from, from their teachers, and we sing a song. Uh, can I sing it for you guys real yeah, quick? Okay. Do, yeah. It goes, when mortar board goes tapping, goes tapping, goes tapping. When mortar board goes tapping, selective are we on scholarship, leadership, service, all three. When mortar board goes tapping, selective are we. So that's our song. We bust in, and we're wearing caps and gowns and all that stuff and, and suits, and we hand the person a, a rose and a certificate, and we invite them to invite them to our tapping reception later that night. And it's just a fun way to recognize students. And we also select two honoraries as well each year. And these are staff members of Purdue, okay. faculty and staff of Purdue. And it's a it's a great way to recognize leaders here at Purdue, um, but also bring them together. That's and what then, I've enjoyed about right. Mortarboard is the diversity. And the way you do it, that's there. sort of a personal check. Is there a limit on how many uh, people you can take in each year? Yes, we, uh, we limit it at uh, 40 students each year. Okay. That can change, but that's kind of the number that we've set as okay. a chapter that we, we would like to target. Okay. Uh, any of the, what about so any special program this year that you would like to share uh, during your term of office? Sure, yeah. sure. We, uh, we've done a number of, of things here at Mortar Board that we've really enjoyed. Um, uh, one thing we're planning here uh, for later this spring is a last lecture series. Uh, and that'll be with a professor here, most likely a retiring professor, um, that uh, students will have an opportunity to attend their last lecture here at Purdue. And this is a chance for the faculty member to really think about, hey, if I had a chance with a group of students to share a message, if I had the floor for an hour, what would I share? And that, that can stretch from a, a vast array of topics, obviously. And so that's one, <clears throat> excuse me, Another is uh, this weekend, actually, we're, we're doing a statewide community service event. And it's bringing together schools with mortar board chapters from all over the state of Indiana. And we're meeting at a central location in Indianapolis to serve that community, uh, which is obviously one of our pillars. And it's never been done before for our section. And this is our first year doing it. We had that idea uh, back at the National Conference in, in Chicago. And, uh, it'll be exciting because it gives our, our members a chance to interact with other chapters, but also it's it's not often that. Um, I need to grab this. Excuse me. But often it's uh, it's not uh, it's not often that uh, that schools, Purdue, IU, um, DePaul, Butler, Ball State, that they come together and serve as a group of people in a community. What community are you going to be doing? Uh, it'll be in downtown Indianapolis. Oh, so we it's have, going to be in, in Marion County. Yep, okay. we have some uh, we have some food banks and and. Uh, so you're each going to go to different spot, uh, or are you all going to go just to one? It's uh, it's broken up. We're going to do um, in the morning. I think we'll do different spots, and then we'll all probably come together and try to do something as a group yeah. as well. So Very it'll good. be fun. Those are a couple initiatives that we've worked on doing um, externally as a group and, and, uh, in making this year a good year for It's been a board. big year for you. Then, yeah, right? definitely. Well, you've taught, you've addressed a little bit on leadership, but let's talk a little bit more about that, about leaders role in academe and in mm. the career world. And then some of the <coughs> leadership things that you've been involved in. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you've really been involved in it. <laughs> You're all set. I, uh, one of my favorite quotes is nothing is more tragic than a missed opportunity. And I learned that quote when I was in high school, actually in our football weight room. Uh, our football coach had quotes posted all the way around the room, and he had that posted right in between um, two squat racks. It was an unknown author, but nothing is more tragic than a missed opportunity. And that stuck with me and still has to this day, so it's I want to take advantage post. of it for sure. Uh, and I, I'll travel back to, uh, to junior high seventh grade which is just kind of an awkward transition stage for most people going from sixth to seventh middle school uh, yeah, right. a lot of new people relationships change and you're at you're in a new new place it's not like it was in elementary school where you know everybody was cool and everybody was king kind of thing um, and I didn't I was not involved my seventh grade year all I did was I went to class and I did 4-H but you know that consisted of showing animals at the county fair and and that was about it. And I didn't, I didn't play sports. I didn't pursue leadership roles. I didn't do anything. And, you know, my, my grades really suffered. And I said, I can remember sitting outside of my English class 
right backed up against my my school lockers and my mom and dad telling me Bo what is going on with you right now we need to step this up and uh, I made a turnaround at that point in my life and I did that because I got involved I started playing football again I got involved in leadership roles I took up some hobbies and interests that were productive rather than um, you know not productive and and uh, I think as leaders uh, especially I see here on Purdue's campus um, some of the people with the best grades are those that are actually most involved and I think statistics show too that uh, those who involve themselves in extracurricular activities actually carry carry on average a higher GPA than those that do not and I think as, as um, you, we want those thought leaders in the classroom um, to also be our, um, our strong leaders in organizations uh, because that's going to go on into the business world, that's going to go on into the education world or in the political world, you name it, there's Boilermakers in every facet of society. So I think uh, the role of um, leadership and involvement in leadership activities like Mortar Border, like the 800 other um, leadership activities that Purdue has is vital, absolutely crucial to student success. Um, when I was coming to Purdue, an alumni told me, I was asking somebody for some, some advice, and an alumni told me, Bo, um, I, I, I kind of lived by the rule of three, and that was uh, get involved in three things uh, at a minimum, um, not too much because you don't want to spread yourself thin, too thin, but three things, one, within your, uh, within your school, within your college that you can really enjoy. Um, so for me, that's the, the Ag Council uh, for College of Agriculture. Uh, two, get involved in something that is campus-wide, um, something that you can, you can do that affects all of campus, and that is uh, Purdue Foundation Student Board for me, and now Mortar Board as well. And, uh, and three, get involved with something that you're just going to have fun doing. And uh, for me, that was uh, helping lead a Bible study uh, called Men's Fraternity um, through Campus House and a couple other churches. So uh, I, I really enjoyed that, and I've shared that advice with some freshmen and sophomores, a rule of three, get involved in something within your, within your college, something campus-wide, and something that you're just going to enjoy and have fun doing. And uh, if you do that, you'll have a great Purdue experience. And you it will not come together. Not just excel with opportunities, but also in the classroom. Right. And I've really found that. One thing I, uh, I think you should, uh, is certainly quite evident, you have to have time management has to really play a big role. Definitely. And that's, Definitely. that's a big challenge. Yeah, and, and what better time to learn it than in college, right? It's not as expensive as if you're in the career. And, uh, and that's something I've learned a lot about. And, and I have a, a mentor of mine who, uh, who actually, he, he works in, in Indianapolis. He's a business leader down there. And uh, he, he challenged me on a couple of things. He's like, Bo, don't spread yourself too thin. Don't be an inch deep and a mile wide. Um, because you want to focus on, you know, what are your essential wins? What do you want to win at? What do you want to be good at? What are your key success factors, if you will? And uh, it's important as students that, that we don't do that and, and one of the, the, that we don't spread ourselves too thin. And one of the, um, the ways that we can prevent that is by having good time management skills. So actually I have right here, I have my Franklin Covey. It's my planner. Also I have my mortar board and my life is in there. I schedule all my stuff. I write my to-do lists uh, in there because when I was younger, I used to think, ah, I don't need one of those planners. I can remember it all in my head. And then you start to amass all these events and activities, and you realize I definitely need it on paper. I need a little help. <laughs> definitely. There you go. Okay. Yeah. And you mentioned the leadership. Uh, Mortar Board has a leadership thing. You might want to mention that for the researchers. The, you have leadership some, conference. Uh, uh, right. Yes. Yeah. Leadership. So obviously another one of our big pillars is right. the leadership side. Sure. Um, and we do a huge leadership conference here on campus. On campus okay. in, in Stewart Center here. Okay. And uh, we do it for about 400 students. Um, we cap it about that, but sometimes we get a little bit more. Sure. Uh, and this year we brought in President uh, Jiski and his wife Patty as well, and uh, and a bunch of other great speakers. And it's just it's a way for students from all over campus that's what I enjoyed most was standing up on that stage looking at the students from literally all walks of campus in one room top student leaders uh, being able to hear from some some really premier leaders as well during that day uh, and we put it it's a it's a one-day conference we put it on it's uh, it's ran by our community service chairs or not excuse me my our leadership chairs leadership conference chairs and uh, they do a phenomenal job organizing it with, uh, with some great speakers and making sure we have great leaders there to attend it's it really as well. Good. Yeah, it's good. To, and that's good for the people 
and the interaction and the more you get to know other people on campus the better off you are so definitely good um, how about hobbies special interest I make some time for hobbies try okay. to <laughs> that's important you got to have uh, Lord, if you don't, <laughs> you're, I don't know. yeah I, I'm a strong believer that uh, that you have to have a recharge um, because there's a lot of discharge when you, especially on a college campus, of involvement with academics and extracurricular activities, and uh, and I, I love to get involved with hobbies. And and actually, leadership activities is a big hobby of mine. Like I, I really enjoy I being involved with in leadership. And you 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 benefit by it, and you enjoy it, and so you definitely get both the best of both. Definitely. So that that's a big hobby of mine. I do uh, speaking on the side. I present workshops and do speaking engagements as a. Uh, keynote speaker. I've spoke all across the country. Um, a lot of those connections stem from FFA, but also from leadership involvement here on campus too. Um, so I've really enjoyed that. But yeah, hobbies, uh, other hobbies, more hobby type things. I love to go to the gym. Um, I swim. I'm trying to do some more swimming, some more aquatics, just a good workout. Um, I've always believed that exercise for the body is like miracle grow for the mind. So it's a good hobby to have, that's for sure. I agree. I love sports, physical activity. If I'm doing something with my hands, whether it's building something or um, playing a sport like football or ultimate frisbee or uh, basketball, then I'm, I'm enjoying I myself. I yeah. also enjoy reading, too. Reading's a big hobby of mine. Uh, try to do at least 10 minutes a day. Leaders are readers, strong believer in that. Um, as you know, with uh, right. working with the library too, right. so uh, that's important for me to uh, to do. Back up, you were taught uh, played football in, in high school. Did you ever think about going on, continuing on in college for that? Actually, yeah, that was the plan. I wanted to, uh, and then FFA came into the picture. Right. And uh, when I was a state officer and a national officer, um, you take two years off of uh, academic deferment for that. Sure. Um, and so that's why I'm probably a little bit of an older senior than most. Um, but uh, that, that's why I didn't really pursue that. But I did. I wanted to. Uh, I would have probably ended up trying to be like the Rudy of Purdue's team because I'm not the tallest guy, uh, and I don't want to be the biggest. Um, but, uh, but I definitely have the heart for it. So I love sports. I have a passion for athletics. It's good, and it's, the students and everybody support it, and it's great to be out there in the Ross City Stadium in the fall. Oh, right. it's amazing. Tailgating and then going into the stadium, it's just a good time with a lot of Boilermakers. That's right, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, a Purdue tradition? Do you have a... Yeah, I... You have more than one. Sometimes sure. Sometimes you just go after one. Or <laughs> uh, there's so. a lot of Purdue traditions I, I've enjoyed taking a part of. One is, is obviously sledding down Slater Hill, uh, which is a lot of fun when it snows here. I've never had a snow day, by the way. Uh, up until this year, we had two in a row, and, and you have to mark that down because it <laughs> happens very rarely. Yes, yeah, it was amazing. I loved it, and uh, <laughs> we need to get more of these in California. I thought, um, but went sledding down Slater Hill with that. Uh, also, this is—I don't know if this would fit under traditions, but for me, it kind of is, and sure. that's going to football games and tailgating, and that's uh, that's going to. Uh, to basketball games and cheering on uh, cheering on our athletics. I've really enjoyed basketball games especially. It's really it's been just uh, amazing. The the electrifying atmosphere that's within Mackey Arena. Like oh, yeah. Times, right. I actually had an opportunity to sit with uh, uh, Mortarboard. We had an opportunity to sit with President Cordova in her in her seating section and uh, I think it was Etuan Moore shot a three-pointer and I got to give President Cordova a high five. So <laughs> that was, check that off the bucket list there. Uh, an outstanding event? Anyone you'd like to share with us? Here at Purdue? Or it could be any place. Hmm. Outstanding event for life. Wow. wow. That's, a, that's a big question. I would say that's a high game question. Um, there's not there's not like one there's there's a collection obviously right. so I'll, I'll pick a, a couple of different periods um, uh, when I was elected to national office that was just that was amazing that was uh, the most exciting moment of my life up until that point uh, when that happened when your name's called in front of thousands of people yeah. to serve for a, for a year yeah it was a, a phenomenal outstanding event for my life and definitely set my course um, and uh, and really shifted my paradigm, my perspective on, on life in a very good way, challenged me to grow and develop as a person in, in ways I hadn't thought of before. Um, so that's definitely one of the outstanding moments, choosing to come to Purdue. 
um, making that jump, that is a, a huge outstanding moment in my life. I've, I've noticed since I've been here at Purdue, uh, the, the bar has been raised in my life. Um, academically, socially, um, as a leader, uh, pretty much in all facets, it's, it has called out my, my greater potential, I feel, as, as a whole person in, in a lot of different areas. Yeah, and um, and so that is definitely an outstanding event uh, as of as of late. I guess is is that, and uh, of course coming up in May there will be an outstanding event, which is graduation uh, from Purdue University, which I'm very excited about. That's right. Then I'm gonna then my next one is the next stage post Purdue. Yes, post Purdue. Okay. Um, you gonna take any traveling after commencement, or because you don't know when you're gonna start? I might do a little bit of traveling. I'll, I'll have a, a small window of time that I'll be back home. My sister's graduating from high school, actually, and then a couple friends getting married too. So okay. definitely mm-hmm. want to be there for those events. Sure. But I might try to do some some traveling. Yeah. Um, after graduation, though, I'm really excited. I get to work with a company called the Lanco Animal Health, and they are in uh, a part of Eli Lilly and Company. And uh, so what what I do is. In real terms, I, I'll be a sales representative for them. And in real terms, what I, what I help do is I help provide farmers with solutions that help them get food to consumers' plates and make that food better for the consumers, safer for consumers, and more affordable for consumers. Um, so better, safer, more affordable. And, uh, and I'm excited to be a part of that. I, I get to play a role in helping feed the world through what we do at Alanco. And my passion is within agriculture. Alanco is a great culture, great company, a lot of great um, high integrity, good character leaders within that company that I'm excited to learn from and have an opportunity to interact with. Sounds so good. that's the plan right now, and then we'll see, at, we'll see where it goes after that. There's a, a lot of interest there, um, and uh, Purdue has been um, great at providing me with a lot of different opportunities to help me explore those. And uh, right now, this is the right direction that I'm very excited about going. And we're ready to take it on, right? Yes. Yeah. Anything I forgot to ask or anything in closing you'd like to say? Go Boilermakers and Boiler Up. There you go. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Thank you.